You know, it's like I know um, when we were on the Fireside was on tour in recent years. Uh, we were up in Seattle, I think, uh, performing all four of us together. And what were you talking about? Do you remember what you were just talking? Yeah, about? Fireside Theater. Performing. Oh, okay. Wow, you're good. I know. You're good. Well, Nothing it, wrong with I, you. I wrote it down in my hand. <laughs> See, so. <laughs> It's easy. But anyway, can I read you? And, and so, so Melinda okay. noticed that that all, a lot of the guys that were coming to see us had these long <laughs> white beards and long hair with beads in it and everything. You know, yeah. she said they're coming out of the hills. Yeah, <laughs> they're see fireside. They're, they're leaving their trailers <laughs> and coming to see. Well, you think about theater. it. I mean, you in the in the sixties and seventies, you couldn't walk by a dorm room without smelling the fragrance of that fine Colombian. As uh, uh, Columbia Records, faded. that is. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, listening, uh, listening to Fireside Theater. It makes life such a wonderful thing. Let's do it, was, it, it was. It was really. Uh, and then you'd hear Fireside Theater. I mean, we were, everybody we were was extremely lucky because at the time that we came together, which is a crazy story to begin with, uh, on KPFK listener supported radio, uh, the FM revolution happened co 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 coincidentally mm -hmm. with the the growth of of the recording industry. And it meant that on colleges, campuses all over the United States, uh, you know, people could play whatever they wanted, Anything. as long as they wanted. Right. And so they could play our, the entire side of our album, which was also an innovation. Mm -hmm. We created albums that told stories. Because you had continuing thought processes on there. <laughs> even, even from album to album, Yeah. believe the it or not, you were smart enough together. to follow it. They, they follow. And DJs love this because, you know, 32 minutes, where Basically, they can, they go, can boogie out, go out and have a smoke. smoke. Sure, yeah. sure. Sure. Bergman used to do that on Radio Free Oz. He was the, the show we were on on KPFK was called Radio Free Oz. It was created by Peter Bergman and another dude who dropped out, and uh, and he was the Wizard of Oz. And he had the gift of gab. And he used to read people's tarot cards over the air. It was a mm -hmm. calling talk show for the the new generation. Right. And. Uh, and he, he would read people's astrological charts and things like that. He would interview people who'd been abducted by uh, uh, spaceships mm -hmm. and Indian chiefs and medicine men and healers and this and that. And then he discovered that I was out there and, uh, and we had gone to Yale together. And he'd written some musicals that I started in Yale. And so we started playing together and, and basically we're doing put-ons. <coughs> And then I yeah. met Phil Austin and Dave Osmond, who were also working at the station, right. who also had this ability to become other characters and weave crazy stories. Mm -hmm. So Peter started to interview us as crazy people, you know, uh, Indians and abdu abductees and healers and all of that. And, and we would take calls and the people would go right along with it. Uh, it, it came to a, a magnificent uh, uh, understanding that we had something going when we did the the uh, Oz Film Festival, and all four and all three of us, uh, to, to Bergman straight man, pretended to be a whole bunch of filmmakers, and we showed our movies on the radio. Ah, and great. one of the movies was an adult film. Uh oh, this mm -hmm. was like a precursor of the of, of, of pornography. And uh, Phil Austin played uh, the uh, a, a guy named Jack Love, who was dressed entirely <laughs> in leather. And was talking about movies for the the bedroom, because yeah. he called them. And one of them was called Blondie Pays the Rent. And we showed a little bit of it on the air. Blondie, <laughs> and we got phone calls of people saying, "How dare you show a dirty movie on the radio?" <laughs> That's when we knew we had something. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. If you can spark that vision in Whoa. the mind. Soon yes. thereafter, Phil Austin had done a record, I think, called uh, Duck Man. Another one called The Astrology record with a guy named Gary Usher at Columbia Records and Gary approached Peter and said I want to do an Oz, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, Oz film, no not a film festival, excuse me, a Radio Free Oz record. Ah, and Peter said no, perfect. no, no, you're going to do perfect. an Oz Fire Sign Theater record. Mm -hmm. Gary said oh, okay, whatever you want, Whatever. but yeah. Disney wouldn't let us use the name Oz. Because they were, they were working on a film called Return to Oz, something like that, an animated feature. So their lawyers, their lawyers got in touch with us. Excuse me, my head has oh, to be as big as my head. Disney lawyers yeah. get in touch. And, and so instead of saying, well, we're Australian, so we're Aussies, and we really have to use a name. You see, you know, it's Oz, it's us. Us is Oz, it's us. Instead we said, fine, because the Fireside Theater was confusing enough for people. That's great. You know? <laughs> That's great. Well, and the fact that we, we were all Firesides was so amazing and so perfect. I'm a Leo, 
uh, Peter was a Sagittarian, Osmond is a Sagittarian, Austin is a uh, an Aries. Even though he's dead, he's still an Aries, okay? He's in the air now, but he's still an Aries. I'm Earth. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that. I, I lost another partner just uh, like three weeks ago. Oh yeah. yeah. I lost Peter three years ago, and uh, Phil Austin passed away of uh, numerous forms of cancer after fighting the, you know, the courageous battle and all yeah. that up there on the wood, uh, on, uh, Fox Island, where he and his wife Una had lived for like 44 years, only four days apart. Wow! In 44 years, and now Una is alone with their five dogs. Wow! And uh, memories of Phil. My wife Melinda and I were going to go up and spend some time with them uh, in our persona as the uh, uh, gin bags. <laughs> we love to go up and drink and smoke with the Austins. We had so much, so many laughs. The Austins created characters for themselves. They're the McCocktails. Yes, Edna, Edna well, Ferber, my cocktail. Okay We're doing oh, just yeah. fine. How are you doing? Great. Everybody treating you okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let us know so if you have a problem. Okay, I will. We're here for you. There's three of us, and we you. can gang up on it. <laughs> well, there's two of us. Yeah, he's the host, and he was Edward Edward Everett McCocktail. Oh, did we have fun? That's oh, fun. So anyway, uh, Dave and I are the only members of the group. Surviving left. members. No. Dave lives on Whidbey Island. He's got a show which is going to entice a, a reaction from Jamie called The Cook and the Comedian. <laughs> There's your reaction. That's my reaction. That's the, right reaction. <laughs> <laughs> the Cook and the Comedian, which he's doing uh, on Whidbey Island for the local Whidbey television. And, uh, and he, you know, he writes poetry, he makes art, uh, he performs often at the local coffee shop up there. And, uh, and he also, uh, along with Taylor Jessen, who is our archivist, helps to put together our books, which are all available at firesigntheater.com. And we're, we're coming out with a compilation of all of our filmed stuff. Everything You Know Is Wrong, and, the, and Nick Danger, The Case of the Missing Yokes, Martian and The Martian Space, Space Party. Party. Oh, yeah. That special DVD is being prepared, and that should be uh, uh, floating out there in the next month or so. Which is timely, because we have an election coming up next year. We do. So who are you not going to vote for? Uh, My God, who's running? I'm going to vote well, for... Do the Republicans running. have any candidates yet? I'm going to vote for Papoon, because he's, Papoon? The, he's yes. the only independent Again, that yeah. I believe in. Tirebiter's not running this year? Well, Tirebiter is... Uh, you know, he was a vice presidential candidate. Right. And I don't know if George... He, George has lost most of his mind now. Yeah. And so, it's not uh, like he had any to begin with. No, and he's he not George E anymore. Yeah. No, he, yeah. Yeah, no, he wore a mask all the time, and now he really, he really needs to wear a mask because yeah. he's got no control over his face anymore. And, and I don't think he remembers uh, George Leroy Tirebiter. You know, he said, "Who are you?" So I think he might run as his own vice presidential candidate because he, you know, he is bipolar, right. and he's also a schizophrenic. Really? Yeah, he yes. never told me that. Yeah, yeah I did. No, I know. I must forgotten it. He doesn't talk to himself. He talks to the other guy. <laughs> right, right. Throughout yeah. the entire history of Firesign Theater, you've done most of the female voices. Why? Because I have a female voice to do. Uh, just call he me went Kate. to Yale. Just call me Caitlin. He went to Yale. I went and to they, Yale. And they I, you know, we had to. Oh, we, there were females. no girls at Yale, so we, we were, what could we do? You know, we, we played with ourselves. That's what we do. You know, <laughs> and it softened it somehow. If you were a girl, you know, it didn't feel so weird. Uh, uh, I, I guess now I played the girls because uh, I didn't have the voice for it. But David also played. There was one point on that record where everybody played Nancy. Yeah, I noticed that. Ah. Yeah. See, the conceit of the record is. It's a transcription of a real radio show. And Nancy, whose real name was uh, uh, Bottles, well, her nickname was Bottles because she drank so much, the actress, she didn't show up. She was drunk, she didn't show up. Oh. So we had to, to sub for her. And I, was, and I was the sound man, and I stepped in for Nancy on the show. But at a certain point where there's a flashback happening, and we're all playing different characters, I could not, I could not be Rocky or Coco and Nancy at the same time. So I think David was Nancy at one point, Phil was Nancy at another point. You know. Yeah, and Weirdly Cool. And That's weirdly when cool. you played Nancy and, uh, and Bergman came out with the wig on. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's all you need. Visually, you have to see stunning. Yeah, he was stunning. Can, can I turn? Can, can you what? Can, can you play can a girl? I play Nancy sometimes? Yes, you can play Nancy sometimes. <laughs> you know who else played Nancy once? John Goodman. <laughs> Oh, really? John Goodman, huge fan, well, 
It's redundant. Yeah. Big fan of the Firestein yeah. Theater. And uh, enthusiastic fan. Enthusiastic. Yes. He oh, used yeah. to do improv in New York. He lived in Hell's Kitchen and they did improv on WBAI. He was a member of an improv group inspired by Fireside Theater. Mm -hmm. And he did a surprise performance uh, in the Nick Danger skit at the Beacon Theater oh, wow. when we were on tour in the 90s, I think it was. Cool. <laughs> it came on. Yeah, I noticed that in the PBS special, when they ran the weirdly cool thing, they would yeah. pin uh, little drop ins for, you know, uh, the yeah. uh, PBS member and uh, John Goodman was in it. Robin Williams. Robin Williams was a big fan. Also too. mentioned. Oh. You Huge know, fan of oh. oh. George, oh. George oh. Carlin. Oh. George Carlin, yeah. I uh, see. Robin Williams. Uh, he, he was turned on by um, "Don't Cru uh, Don't Crush the Dwarf Henry the Pliers." Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the first thing that turned me on. Or uh, not turned me on, turned him on. Um, but he knew the first record too, because the first time I met him it was so funny. He was doing Mark and Mindy, and he was working out every night at an improv club. Right. Doing his stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. he was unstoppable. Just creating. Unstoppable. Yeah. The muse just flowed through. And, and first thing he said when he saw him was, "Oh my God, Phil Proctor, you speak Russian." Because I'd spoken Russian on the <laughs> first record, and that was that impressed him, you know. And later he went into he did that movie where he played a Russian character in it on the Moscow, yeah, Moscow and the Hudson. On right. Moscow and the Hudson. Uh, I miss. I, I miss think Robin. that was my first album, Waiting for the Electrician. Uh, the, the first album was my first album, and I was just young enough to be changed by that. Changed forevermore. Changed forever. But as, as Bergman that would explains say, a lot. Would say. Uh, <laughs> Park and lock it, not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, Waiting for the Electrician, which was about a revolution in Eastern Europe, uh, was uncannily predictive, as so many of our albums mm -hmm. were. Because did you know what what job Lequeleza, Lequeleza had? He was an electrician. He was an electrician yeah. on a ship. Uh -huh. a ship's electrician. So We didn't know that. There is sparks behind the titles. Almost so every what title. What does dwarf mean? Don't crush that dwarf, hand me the pliers. Uh, it, it had it had a strange connection to the First World War, which was crush the Hun. Okay. And the Hun was was uh, 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 embodied as a, a little dwarfish character on this piece of sheet music, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was called Crush the Hun. And when we were digging around for a title, this appeared, and we also thought about. In the Second World War, they hired little people to work inside the wings of the bombers in the, in the, in the wow. munitions plants because okay. okay. they could rivet from inside the wing and they could fit in there. Ribbit. So don't Ribbit. don't put down disabled people. Oh no! You know because right. they they are people and they can help us so all. Technically, it's don't crush that little person. Hand me the blood. But it also comes <laughs> from the fact that in the old days when you were watching television. A certain tube would go out, and your television would suddenly become like little dwarf. It would squeeze everybody down into these little dwarf things, and you had to get a pair of pliers and get behind the mm -hmm. set and turn this incredibly small little stick of a knob mm -hmm. yeah. to, to open the picture up again. See, I used the pliers for the when the dial came off the telly and it was lost. Yes, yes. You know that you would just pliers, you know. That's right. Before we had, you know, the click, 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 which we also predicted. And of course, the counterculture thought it was, don't put out that joint. Yes. Hand me the roach clip. That's yeah. that's right. <laughs> was the pop that's pliers. right. That's right. That's also uh, true. That's yeah. also true. That was the under the counterculture. Actually. That's right. <laughs> so you see, I mean, we, we the whole thing about Fireside uh, it, it, still is that you can hear different meanings in the albums, different things every time you listen to them. There's still that. Oddly enough, that 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 was a big head. A nice cameo. <laughs>